Welcome back folks to this new tutorial. Let's have a look at how to do some um, very stylized explosions. So here are some examples we're going to go through. So we have uh, yeah, several styles and uh, obviously they're not realistic um, in the behavior but still nonetheless uh, they're pretty interesting for um, any stylized production, cartoony or you know. So uh, let's have a look at how we build those guys. Basically uh, it requires almost the same setup as what we did with the tornadoes. Um, so instead of using uh, particles for that matter we will use um, objects and I have two objects actually. I have... Um, let's have a look at this first object here. It's a geosphere on which I have applied a displace, like you could have seen before. And uh, this displaced um, refers uh, to a cellular map, which I'm going to bring over here. And that's going to be map number two, cellular. So um, exactly the same uh, thing as we did before. Um, this time I have animated this um, object so that it's going to give the explosion dynamic. So what you have to do is to um, let me first add the torus and so you basically scale it real fast and then have a nice slowdown and then bring it down. Okay. Uh, you can see that I also have animated um, the amount of displacement so that by the time this object reaches its maximum uh, size I'm not injecting any more noisy pattern, um, noisy smoke pattern in my simulation. Okay, very noisy at the beginning and as we uh, scaling up this uh, object and then it gets pretty smooth and then disappear and it's going to disappear inside of the volume it has created itself. Okay, there is, a, there is an artifact here, but uh, it actually doesn't really show uh, in the rendering. And it doesn't show because we have a second object. Let me bring the second object. And it's uh, same thing. It's a torus. Okay. And on which I have applied a displace. And it has almost the same dynamic. If I um, bring the torus on top with my sphere, then there is a um, slight unsinking in the way they um, scale. First, I want my blast on the ground, and then I want my blast, um, my mushroom blast, and that gets created. Uh, by the advection, upward advection of the explosion and the heat being generated pushing upward uh, my smoke. Okay, so um, yeah, instead of being even, I first want to have my initial blast with this guy and then we have the mushroom happening there. Uh, the next step is to have a look at uh, the setup of the fume effects simulation. I have uh, two helpers, one for each of my guy, one for the Taurus and one for the Geosphere. I'll call this guy, oops, change the name here for Geosphere. And um, yeah, let's uh, select again. And why I have chosen to um, put both of the objects into separate helpers. Well, that way I can um, I can apply a different amount of smoke to both of them, so that they don't react the same way. They don't have the same velocity, so I have much more control over it. You can see that uh, my uh, source explosion one which I should have labeled to be the one that has the torus. Actually, you can see it here. 
uh, has a slightly less amount of uh, smoke than uh, the geosphere. Okay. Um, same thing, I have less um, temperature because uh, I don't want my uh, initial radial blast to raise. Okay, I don't want the buoyancy um, to um, getting uh, created by a higher temperature to raise my smoke. I also applied um, uh, two different maps. Uh, actually, that's yeah, two different maps to um, to generate my smoke, my temperature, my fuel. Actually, I'm not even using fuel, so let's focus on the temperature and the smoke. I have uh, two different maps, and you can see it here. Both of them are noise map. Okay, and with slightly differences. Uh, for the number one, for the temperature, I have scattered uh, the temperature location across my um, torus so that it's pretty non-uniform while on my um, uh, geosphere I have a pretty much uh, regular um, wait, I may be saying a mistake so now what I was about to say, let's focus on the torus first so um, like I said, I'm scattering the amount of uh, temperature um, on my torus so I don't have just have little pockets of uh, high temperature or temperature of an amount of 150 maximum and then I'm applying a more constant noise pattern for the smoke so that actually my torus is filled with um, a constant amount of smoke all around. Now if we have a look at the geosphere um, I don't have any temperature applied to my geosphere, temperature map applied, but I still have the same uh, amount of smoke applied uh, to its surface. Okay, back to simulation. I'm using the same trick as uh, what we did with the tornado. I have very, very slight uh, velocity damping, um, some vorticity, and I'm applying a uh, pretty large scale noise so that the function is very smooth and that's why you see uh, you don't you you see um, you don't see too much noise in the pattern and I have a pretty high uh, dissipation strength so if I bring uh, my uh, preview hopefully I was hoping that I still have now so let's uh, let's generate Gonna stop and generate um, low res. Let's go. Okay, so going back to the sim, I'm managing to actually have a pretty high dissipation strength so that I don't have the very common lingering. Um, uh, behavior of smoke, you know, as soon as you have an explosion then you have uh, this smoke lingering and raising in the air and, and, and it gets pretty messy uh, if you're trying to do something uh, very cartoony, very stylized so uh, the trick is to make sure that uh, we're cutting uh, off um, the, the amount of smoke we're actually injecting inside of our um, inside of our system. So if I bring in uh, by two things, by having a high dissipation strength as well as a high uh, minimum density and if I bring the my dub sheet I also have animated um, two properties. One other property is my smoke density has been animated and so that, you can see it here that I don't have any smoke, so that I'm actually uh, stopping the emission of smoke. So that way I'm cutting any, any, uh, any creation of smoke after my main explosion. Okay, so that we can go to something else, 
like your next shot or your next position where you're going to uh, use that kind of uh, explosion. Let's say you have several explosions, then uh, it gets your scene, your shot gets still pretty clear because you don't have all those uh, trails of smoke still raising in the air. Okay, so the trick is um, to have your um, smoke density um, being pretty high at the beginning of the simulation, then dropping after um, seven frames to six, and then slowly dropping down to two or actually zero, so you have nothing left over there. Okay, uh, those are the scaling keys. Uh, that's pretty much it. We have exactly the same thing for the other object, which is my uh, which is going to be my geosphere or my torus, for that matter. Actually, object source explosion zero one. I should have labeled more correctly. You see always label correctly so you don't have to try to understand what you have done. So uh, explosion one is the torus and I actually want the torus to linger a little bit longer so I have this uh, very nice um, uh, trail here but that doesn't last too long. Okay so this is uh, a basic um, setup for um, very stylized uh, explosion. It works pretty well. It renders really fast as well. Um, let me render that. Just gonna make sure I don't have any background to render, and gonna bring. It's lagging because of Camtasia. Okay, I'm gonna close that, and then just render render a single, and let's try that. Of course, you have to um, disable, or should I say, hide your objects here and there, and render. Okay, so let's have a look at the second example. That's going to be this one. I'm going to pause until it loads. Okay, I have my scene loaded. And here we have exactly the same setup as the preceding example. But what I, I did is um, space warp. And in this case, it is a motor. Okay, so the idea is to inject inside of our um, field or velocity field. Um, um, a vector, um, some um, vector displacement uh, according to the behavior of our um, motor. So basically what I'm injecting here is a rotation, is a rotation, uh, rotational coefficient to, our, to the velocities that are actually calculated um, thanks to the advection of the fluid simulation. So the end result is that as our smoke is raising up, you see this very nice fluid uh, swirl. Very interesting uh, behavior here. Obviously not realistic, but that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for, I don't know, a magic explosion or a magic poof smoke. You know, you're throwing on the ground a potion and, and it creates some kind of a monster or whatever. Okay, so really trying to play with our curves and uh, having um, motion, creating a motion that is very fluid, organic, uh, even though not realistic, but still. You see that um, the motor has been placed so that it injecting its uh, influence uh, not right at the beginning when we have a blast, but as the smoke is actually um, raising up. Okay, everything else is exactly the same thing. 
we have auteurs that blast and then we have this guy and that rise up and disappears let's have a look at another example now okay I'm gonna fix my so this is another example and let me bring my so building up on top of the preceding example I have exactly the same uh, setup and what I added as you can see is another motor here and the idea is that as the fluid the smoke is raising up and being under the influence of this motor it will also be under the influence of this motor which will give a very nice and smooth uh, swirl the kind of uh, vortices that you see behind um, engines uh, airplane engines or helicopters when they're uh, very close to uh, a sandy ground okay and what we could do as well will uh, is to add another um, space warp uh, like a wind orientating this wind this way okay so and so the idea will be that as my fluid is actually swirling we could also push him on this pushing pushing it on the side and breaking slowly uh, the spiral pattern to something a little bit more um, uneven okay and to do that I will just uh, include this super far away space warp my wind Here we go. So going back to my fume effects, uh, we'll add this guy. Okay, and let's have a look at the result. So we have our initial blast. Let's have a look at the display. and as the smoke is reaching uh, the area of interaction with our motors it should also be under the influence of the wind and one of them should take over if you remember the wind will add on a regular basis its component to the system uh, so if we don't um, counterbalance it then the wind will get stronger or the result of this wind will get stronger and stronger so let's see uh, through the course of the simulation how this uh, looks right now I haven't um, included some turbulence we could use um, the wind turbulence with a very smooth scale so that as it's moving away it's going to react to a very smooth noise pattern okay so we're breaking up um, I'm probably going to reach uh, the bound here but we're definitely breaking up our pattern nicely probably I should um, I should probably bring down the the force of this wind okay so that we definitely have uh, we definitely having a very linear re um, reaction uh, or, or action from all of those space warp which gives us a very symmetrical um, uh, actions from those space warps to our uh, container so that's not something you really want to do you want um, you want it to be a little bit more uh, artistic and so you want to break a little bit the symmetry 
and to do that I will say that we should bring down uh, the strength of this guy to some extent and probably uh, use some turbulence. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to pause the video and come back as soon as the simulation has been created. So it has calculated the simulation. Um, again, one more time, we're reaching the bounding uh, for the bounding side of our simulation grid, but box. But um, it's okay. It's just a matter of um, showing the concept more than uh, having an awesome super result right off the bat. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think it's a matter of tweaking now and finding the good trade-off, the good balance between uh, the force of the space warp and the force of this one. This one obviously is not as um, important as both of those guys. So, but yeah, definitely it's very cool. Um, it's a very cool rig, very cool setup, super easy. You could use it also as a as a sky rolling, sky clouds rolling. Okay, let's have a look again at the rounded version of them. If yeah. That's pretty sweet and very easy to set up. Obviously, they are very low res uh, as a matter uh, of fact, but that the purpose of those exercises is to show you uh, how much flexibility you can have into modeling um, your simulation, either in FumeFX, but it's also possible in other um, packages, just like in Houdini. Uh, so be bold and uh, use space warps. Use your own expressions as well. This is totally possible uh, in Max in in Max under Fume FX. Uh, try uh, things that we still haven't seen out there, and uh, can't wait to see what you guys can come up with all those uh, informations. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Thank you.